There are a lot of different things you need to consider when creating new project in Asana. You need to look how to import tasks, how to use pre-built structure, or maybe how would you want to structure your project if you're planning to start from scratch. Let's take a look at the process of creating new project in Asana and all the things that you need to consider. There are multiple ways and a lot of different options on how you can create new project in Asana. One way is to click the plus button and select new project. This brings up the wizard and you can choose either to create a blank project, use a template, or import a spreadsheet. What is important here is that even though creation of the new project seems like a very simple task in Asana, there are a lot of considerations when you're doing the work. For example, if you choose to use template, you will be presented with a variety of different templates. And each one of these templates is designed for different types of projects. If you will choose option to import a spreadsheet, you would need to define the tasks ahead of time and format them in a format that will be understood by Asana. For the purposes of this demo though, we will just choose and go ahead and create a blank project. But as you can imagine, even for this simple option, there are a lot of different considerations. Specifically, you need to have a good understanding of your project privacy levels. Is this something everybody on the team should be able to see? Or is it just for you? Or maybe it is somewhere in between. Another important consideration is how would you like to see your project? As you can see, Asana provides four different views. One view is the list. Another view is the board. Another view is the timeline. And then there's a calendar view. Do you have a preference? Something for you to decide and choose the right choice for your particular project. And last but not least selection you need to make is about project's metadata. And the big question here is how are you going to name your project? The project name should be clear and descriptive. For example, in my case, I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to call it how to build new e-commerce store. I will make this project public to product. And what this means is this is the concept created by Asana, making it public to everybody who has access to the system. Or if you would like to keep data just for yourself, you can select private to project members. I'm going to select the list view because this is the type of view that works best for me and then click create project. Keep in mind that even after you created a new project, you can switch between different views right here among Asana tabs. A lot of times, instead of starting from scratch, you would like to take advantage of existing templates. Let's take a look at all project planning templates Asana provides to you. A lot of times, you might consider creating new project from existing template in Asana, based on the pre-built templates that's already available. There are multiple ways to do it. One of the ways is click on the product plus sign here, and another way is click on the product plus right in this area. When you clicked on the plus sign, you need to select project because this is what you will be creating. And there are three different choices. You can create blank project, you can use template, or you can import spreadsheet. We are interested to explore how to create project from the template. Most of the time, when you're building project from the template, you already have a predefined work stream or a process, which you're just trying to track in Asana. Because of this, you need to select the project based on the work type or product, this is an Asana terminology, that is being used. And the good thing is that Asana supports most traditional work streams. Let's look at each process and each work stream supported by Asana, where template is provided in more details. The templates are organized in the popular section, as well as in the type section. Type section contains templates based on the process and based on the project type and popular section contains project templates that users select most frequently. As you navigate through the available templates, in the middle of the screen, you will see how your dashboard is going to look like in Asana after you select that particular template. It is simply amazing the variety of choices that Asana provides to you for the work stream tracking. Almost all the situations you can imagine in the work environment can be captured in Asana and tracked in Asana. There are different dashboards available based on the work type. For example, if you click on this drop-down box, you see that the types might be marketing projects or product, which was selected for us by default, where most likely you will be doing product in the agile or waterfall manner. You also have access to design project templates. 
as well as operations, sales, customer success, HR, IT, engineering, and cross-functional. Let me switch back to the product type and we will explore most common project types that might be used in your organization. So what is a product in a business environment? Typically, it is a solution which delivers value to the customers. Typically, you need a project team to deliver this solution. Some of the product samples might be building e-commerce site, doing a hardware upgrade for the organization, or doing new operating system rollout. Typically, for these types of projects, you might consider building a project plan, and Asana provides you with a good option. Also, you might consider running it in Agile, and Asana also provides you a good option for that. For example, you might be doing sprint planning here, doing sprint retrospective, and you also have choices to do stand-up meetings. All of this concept very familiar to people that use Agile. As we finish the development of the product, we might uncover some defects, and Asana provides you a tool to do bug tracking for the defects. Asana also helps you support product launches because there is a board for that as well. And if you're a good project manager, you're always concerned about customer feedback. And you're always concerned how can we get it, how can we track it, how can we implement it in our product. And for that, you have a customer feedback board as well. If your product has continuation, meaning that you will continuously improve it phase after phase, you might consider building product roadmap, and Asana has a board for that as well. And if you have a large team and your project runs over many, many months, you might help your team members set team goals and objectives. And there is a board for that as well. Because of this flexibility and variety of choices, using Asana is ultimately an excellent choice when you're building your product, because your product building life cycle is supported in many different dimensions. But for the purposes of this demo, I would like to select the product project plan and use this template to create a board. As a next step, you need to select the project name and I typed in hardware upgrade. This is the name of my project. And the last choice you need to make is decide on the privacy level. Do you want to make this project available to everybody on the team or make it private to particular project members? I'm gonna keep this project public and then click on the create project button. As you can see, new project that was created shows up on the left section in Asana, along with other projects that I have available. I specifically wanted to choose non-traditional hardware upgrade project because it doesn't really seem that this is a product. But hardware upgrade really helps you deliver new hardware for the organization and helps people start using new technology to become more productive. When you use template, Asana helps you organize work in sections. This particular template has a planning section, milestone section, enhancements needed, as well as results. You can view this section and pretty much all of this information in multiple different views. As you can see on the top, I'm looking at this information in the list type of view, but you can also select board view, which mimics Kanban board. You can select timeline, where you can see traditional Gantt chart view of the project as well as you can select the calendar view of the project where you will see specific tasks in the calendar format. Another cool thing to consider when you're creating project from the template is that you can create organizational template. The best way to do it is save one of your existing projects that you built in Asana and make it and maintain it as organizational template, allowing other people on the team, other project managers, to use it when they create their own projects. A lot of times, you may need to create a very simple project plan in Asana. One of the simplest way to run the project is using Kanban board. Let's go step by step on how you can take advantage and create Kanban board style project plan in Asana. It is very easy to create a new project plan in Asana. Once you log in into the application, all you need to do is to click the plus button and select a new project. You're presented with the screen and three different choices, blank project, use a template, or import a spreadsheet. Using a template is the easiest way to create a new project, but for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to start from scratch and select create a new blank project. The title of my project is WooCommerce implementation on the WordPress. And once I selected the title, 
I can choose a default view. There are four different views, and you see samples of the views on the right hand side. The default choice is list view. You also have a choice of board view. If you're interested in Kanban boards, that might be a good choice. If you know the Gantt charts, the timeline might be a good choice. Or if you just like the calendar, that might be an excellent choice for you. I am going to choose the board view because this is the best view for the small projects. At least from my experience. Last but not least important consideration here is the privacy setting. You have two choices. You can make this project public to everybody on your team, or you can make it private and only have visibility to this particular project yourself. I'm going to choose the public to product, and product is Asana's concept of where you make it public to the product. Public to product is the default choice here on the list. And this is what I'm going to keep. Once I'm done with the settings, I'm going to click Create New Project. Once you set up a new project in the tool, you get to what's called the Kanban view. You might heard a different terms for that, but that's ultimately the idea of simplicity. Kanban view works very well if you are just one person or if you have a small team. Let me explain. There are only three columns here. To do column, in progress column, and then a complete column. For every task that you create, you keep all initial tasks in the to-do column. And in fact, Asana gives you a default task one. You can add new tasks in each and every section. So let's see what we can do with task one. I'm gonna click on the task one and make necessary updates. Because my project is to build an e-commerce store, the main task here is to design product offerings. Actually design what I am going to be selling. And that's what this task is all about. I need to assign it to somebody. And in my case, I'm just going to assign it to myself. I also will benefit of setting up a due date because this is what project is. It's something that has the end date. So ultimately, what you need to do is drive your project to the implementation. Let me set the end date for that particular task. I am going to pick July 20th. This is a good date because it gives me time to build the product offerings for my e-commerce store. Next field here is the dependency. But because this is the first task I am creating for my project, there are no dependencies. That's just the first one. Maybe for the next task, I will be able to set up a dependency and make it dependent upon completion of this particular task. Moving forward, the next field here is the description. I am going to add the description real quick. And ultimately, my description shows what actually needs to be accomplished as part of this task. The key for this task is to complete research based on the demand for the ebooks on the topic of artificial intelligence. You need to understand the sales volume. You need to understand the content that is offered in those particular ebooks. You need to understand authors that write about this, as well as the competition. The cool thing about Asana is once you entered all of the values, you don't even need to click the save button because it's all saved automatically. All I did right now, I just clicked an other available field in my browser. So now we have a first task. Let me explain to you what we see on the screen. We have this task in the column to do, which means I haven't started working on this particular task. As soon as I start, I can drag it into in progress. And that's the indicator for other people or even for myself if I'm the only one working on this project that I'm currently working on this task. Once I'm done working on this task, I can just drag it to complete section. And that's ultimately what's called a life cycle for the task in my project. Typical successful project from my experience has seven different phases. The first phase is project initiation. This is where you build your project plan. You decide on financial viability. Ultimately, viability is something where you ask the question, is this something that's going to help me? this particular project? That's the most important question. Is it going to help my business? In the next phase, you decide how you would do a proof of concept. Ultimately, you do implementation on a smaller scale. Step three is go no go decision. Are you making a big investment? Are you deciding to move forward? And everything that you learned from the proof of concept in the main implementation of the project. Phase four is the design phase. This is where you designed what you're going to implement. Phase five is where you build and test your product. 
Phase 6 is the actual launch. And Phase 7 is where you're deciding how are you going to continue with this project. Are you going to continue and do small enhancements or maybe large enhancements? Are you going to keep the team on board or are you going to stop at this point and decide where are you going to invest your money and energy next? The view that I'm showing you here is very cool for the small project. But imagine the large team. And this particular view works extremely well for just one person or small team, I would say under seven members. But imagine the team of 100 members. This is where you would benefit from the structure I just showed you with the seven key milestones. And the best thing about Asana is that it allows you for the flexibility. Let me switch to another project and I'm going to scroll down and select another project on my list, which is called Create an E-Commerce Store. And I'll show you how in the different view you can add all of the sections into your project plan. We are looking at the different project and we are looking using the different view. To avoid confusion, let me switch to the board view to remind you the same view we just had. But instead of to do, doing and done, we have project initiation, doing and done. Ultimately, if we switch to another view, to the list view, this is the view that we get. An equivalent of the section here in this view is an equivalent of the column in the board view. That's how simple it is. And ultimately, all we need to do to set up this structure with the seven key milestones is just take the content of the seven milestones and create section for each individual milestone in Asana. And you can do it in any view that's available in Asana. For example, project initiation column matches the key milestone one on the list. So if we really want to set up the structure in Asana, our next step would be to modify section two and call it proof of concept. And doing it is extremely easy in Asana. You just type on the section title and change the content. You can do exactly the same thing for the column three, go, no go decision. Let me just switch you to the list view so you can see that every change that I made in the board view will be reflected also in the list view and in any other view. It's just the same data that's shown differently. Now we ran out of sections to change, so all we need to do now is to add a new section. And you can also do it in any view available. Our next section on the list is design section. All I need to do is click add section and add design. And I can go through exactly the same steps for all remaining sections. And now let's take a look on how to create an effective e-commerce project plan in Asana. One of the best ways to organize project in Asana is typically by creating a project milestones and then putting tasks under each milestone. For example, in this project, there are seven milestones, project initiation, proof of concept, design, build, test for quality assurance, a launch of the website, as well as ongoing support and enhancements. Different activities typically performed in the different phases of the project. For example, as part of initiation phase, you typically research the platform, which might be out of the box solution you're trying to implement. And you also make sure that you secure the funding to run the entire project. A lot of times during initiation, you also need to decide what kind of skills would be needed to successfully implement this project. And where would you find the right team members to help you implement this project? During the proof of concept phase, you do a small scale implementation. For example, if you would build e-commerce store, you will try to go live with the small store, maybe selling instead of 100 products, just 10 products, or maybe selling the full scale of products, but presenting it to the smaller list of customers. For example, I'm in the WordPress right now and I have access to the WooCommerce plugin. If we click on the WooCommerce, you see that there are a lot of steps associated with the store setup. And in fact, finishing the store setup might be a proof of concept. To set up successful store, you need to define store details, add products, set up payment methods, set up taxes, and personalize your store. A lot of times, capabilities of the particular plugin, like WooCommerce, would define the tasks of what you need to do for the particular store. Once you're done with the proof of concept, the next step is to do the design. During the design phase, you define how people are going to be using your store and you build use cases. Then you're designing it actually by doing UI and UX, understanding how data is going to flow and defining the technical architecture. During the build phase, 
you either customize the site or enhance and configure the technology that you selected as a plugin for your e-commerce store. For example, when setting up WooCommerce engine on WordPress, you need to consider what type of products are you going to be selling. There is the whole category of products in the WooCommerce, and you need to define categories, tags, and attributes for each product. For example, if we click Add New Product, you see the list of certain fields that need to be populated to define the product. It could be digital product, or it could be physical product. And if we jump into the product data, we see that you need to define regular price, sale price, tax status. If it's a physical product, you also need to consider inventory. If you need to ship this product, you also need to define the dimension. You also can define linked product to help customers better meet their needs, as well as promote cross-selling. And there are a lot of other fields like attributes, advanced, or if it's a digital product, maybe you have something related to the ebook store. Quality assurance for e-commerce store basically means that you need to test your store as a user. You need to come in, find what you're looking for, order this product, receive an email, and on the back end, you need to make sure that shipping works and you have a process for returns. Launching of the e-commerce store is typically a very exciting event but you need to make sure that a lot of things got done before the launch date. You need to understand what is your marketing strategy, what kind of promotions are you going to do, how customers are going to discover your store among a lot of other stores, what kind of ads you might be running, and a lot of other things. And last but not least is a very important step. You need to define how you're going to do the maintenance of the website. You would need a team of professionals that will be fulfilling the orders, in doing the shipments for the physical products if necessary. And you also need to decide if you're going to do ongoing improvements and who is going to be your team for that. If you went through the process of defining what you're going to be doing through this main seven phases of the project, now you have the easy task. All you need to do is to understand what are you going to be doing as part of every phase. And once you understand that, you need to add task into Asana. When you create new project plan in Asana, it comes with some pre-built milestones as well as pre-built tasks. So tasks two and three are two of those pre-built tasks and I already renamed the task one in Together Requirements. We can add a new task by clicking Add Task button. And I'm going to write the name of the task here. My task is to complete research of WooCommerce plugin that is installed on the WordPress to better understand what exactly needs to be done to configure successful e-commerce store. Let me go into task details to better understand what exactly needs to be done. Here on this screen, I need to assign task to somebody. In this configuration, I only have myself, but in the typical project, you have multiple team members and you would need to define who is actually going to be doing this work. And that should be based on qualifications and experiences. You also need to define the due date. You select the calendar and define by which date this task would need to be completed. I am going to select August 17th. In the next section, you need to add dependencies. Is this task dependent upon other tasks? And you see multiple tasks in this project, as well as in other projects that I'm running here in the system that you can choose from. I'm not going to select anything, but in a real project, there might be dependency. In the priority field, you need to define what's the importance of this task. To me, it sounds like a high importance because we can't move forward without completing it. And in the status field, I am going to say on track, but you have two other choices at risk or off track, and you can add your own choices by using the edit button. In description field, you typically define what's the essence of this task and provide additional details. The essence of this task is to identify required settings for WooCommerce plugin that need to be configured to make WooCommerce operational on the WordPress platform. Now, as we have this task configured, we can close the details window. And we can also delete task 2 and task 3. Or we can recycle them and put some other tasks instead of them. To delete the task, you hover the cursor on top of the task, do a right mouse click on your mouse, and select delete the task. And the cool thing about Asana is that it allows you to undo if you deleted the task by mistake. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, this video was helpful and helped you to solve your challenge. If you liked the content, Please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this and we will make sure to deliver it to you in the future. Also, please make sure 
to check out our free and premium resources on the website. All you need to do is to go to the menu section and select appropriate options. In addition, make sure you don't forget to look at the downloads in the description section of this video. I also recommend that you follow online training for everyone. We are constantly delivering new content to help you solve different problems and challenges. And I also have a favor to ask. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please make sure to share this video with your friends or colleagues to help them solve their challenges. Make sure to leave your questions or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. Thanks for watching.